This episode was brought to you by my love of the best character in the Avatar The Last Airbender series, the Cabbage Vendor. I found myself today with two heads of cabbages and no real plan as to what I was going to do with them. This only happened because I asked my boyfriend to buy me a head of Napa cabbage and also a head of lettuce, but then he got mixed up and accidentally just bought me a different head of cabbage. So with that in mind, let's just make a two course meal made up of cabbages. Cabbages two ways. The first one we're going to do is make a cabbage stew or a cabbage hot pot. I had made a vegan version of this before, but since I had some lamb lying around, I figured that the gamey goodness would complement this dish very well. If you're not into eating meat, put some dry shiitakes and dry porcini mushrooms at the bottom of the pot and then put some fresh oyster mushrooms in between the leaves where you see me put the lamb here. The process is pretty easy, just chop off the bottom of the Napa cabbage and then remove the leaves one by one off of the head of the cabbage itself and then use those to kind of like overlap your way into the pot so that you almost kind of create a flower shape. The lamb that I use has been sliced super thin and is meant for hot pot and shabu shabu and it's just a matter of taking the lamb and putting them in between the leaves wherever you can find space. I personally really like the flavor of lamb but if you don't they also make this kind of sliced meat in beef and pork. Now this was an extra special treat from my farmer's market, it was the last chance that I could get chestnut mushrooms from my mushroom guy. As you can imagine, they've got a slight nutty flavor, kind of like a mild shiitake aroma as well. And I did whatever I could to really just stuff these in there because they've got such a great satisfying texture and the stems almost eat like asparagus. Now I'm going to top this all off with some superior stock that I've reheated from my freezer. You can click the card to get that recipe. And if you're wondering, yes, I am still using the same batch of superior stock that I had made from that initial video. Not only does it make a lot, but it stores in the freezer really well, and I pretty much use it for everything. Now I had promised on this side quest that I was going to teach you how to make vegan chicken cutlets using oyster mushrooms and frankly it's super easy. What you really have to do is take your oyster mushrooms and then tear them up into flattish pieces and then put them through a dredge of potato starch, all purpose flour, some salt and white pepper. Now because I was already using egg I wasn't going to waste it for this purpose but I'm using egg as my binder for the panko crumbs. All you need to do is have a bowl of some water and potato starch and use that as your wet batter in replacement of egg and it works equally well. In fact, it comes off even crunchier, I think. Pro tip, I prefer using Korean panko crumbs because it comes in bigger bags, is oftentimes cheaper, and I think the texture is better. It's just so much more airy. I just really enjoy the sounds of pan frying, but yeah, all you have to do with these mushrooms since they're not made of meat is just to pan fry them on either side until they're golden brown and then they're pretty much done. Bringing it back to Korean panko crumbs, the way you can tell the difference if you cannot read either Korean or Japanese is you can always tell Korean writing compared to Chinese or Japanese writing is the fact that Korean writing has circles in it. No other Asian written language, as far as I know, has circles in it except for Korean, which I think is really cool that we have our vegan fried chicken cutlets, I'm going to season them with a little salt and give them a little drizzle of chili oil because we do love the spiciness here. Let me show you how tender and meat-like this tear is. I promise you, like, it is very suspiciously reminiscent of chicken. And where we will put these is in our Ponche Francaise, aka our Brazilian bread rolls, which can also very easily be made vegan. And that all just culminates into a delicious vegan fried chicken style cutlass sandwich. I had made three different kinds of fried chicken sandwiches that day and this was the only vegan one and it held its own very easily and very well against the meat based ones. So I highly recommend it whether you eat meat or not. Oh, and another fun fact, because mushrooms in their molecular structure are just so much harder to overcook than any meat or vegetable, if you've never made a pan fried chicken cutlet before, you might have an easier time trying to learn it with a mushroom because it's pretty easy to overcook chicken and it is really hard to overcook mushrooms. While that Napa cabbage is simmering nicely, we will be using this regular head of cabbage to make a spicy Szechuan style stir fried cabbage to go on top of some rice. First thing you gotta do is just take off the loose leaves and then you can discard them or feed them to your dog who will be farty the next morning. Half your cabbages and then core them. Discard or compost the cores because they're gonna be way too hard to eat and then thinly slice your cabbage into small strips. We are gonna stir fry this real quick over a hot wok so small pieces will cook much more quickly. If you're gonna do this with one one entire cabbage, you're gonna have a lot of strips left over. This is just a lot of food to make for just one person. So you can wrap the other half of the cabbage in saran wrap and use it for something later, like a stew or something.
She's a gentle little chompy girl. Stir frying is not the hardest cooking skill that you're ever going to learn, but it's something that you have to get used to and something that you have to get into the mindset of. Basically, you need to have everything ready right then and there. So all of your prep, all of your slicing. So I'm slicing some ginger here. You're going to mince some garlic. Have it all ready to just toss in at once because you're probably going to spend 90% of your time getting ready to stir fry something and then 10% of your time actually stir frying it. It is a super quick way to cook. And also, when you chop anything in a stir fry, for example, like the ginger or the garlic, make sure you cut them all into uniform size pieces. This ensures that all the individual pieces will cook at the same rate, so you don't end up with some parts that are burnt and some parts that are still raw. And finally, most importantly, even though your wok might be seasoned pretty well, the really important part here is to make sure that it is completely dry. Before you put anything, oil, anything on your wok, before you start using it to cook, let it run a little bit on the heat so that any residual moisture at the bottom of the wok is burnt off. If you really want it to be super nonstick, what you can do is first let it dry and then coat it with oil. Dump that oil out once it starts to smoke smoke and then put on a fresh coating of oil that you're going to actually cook with because once oil starts smoking then it's starting to oxidize and too much smoky oil will just ruin the flavors of everything in general. So because I have a lot of food to cook and I'm doing this in a small pan I'm going to do this in batches. I started off with a little bit of Szechuan peppercorns in the oil following it off with some ginger and then some garlic before pushing them back and forth through the center of the wok where it is the hottest. Once I have mixed together everything nicely and kind of incorporated the flavors onto each other I will add the cabbage. Now as far as leafy green goes, cabbages are super hearty and really forgiving, especially for stir frying. So it is a great way to practice stir frying vegetables. Other vegetables that are good for this include broccoli, cauliflower, any kind of hearty green that you can think of. Next thing I'm going to do is season with just a little bit of salt. I use diamond crystal salt, which actually has a larger volume than most other kosher salts, which means that I could put what seems like a lot, but it's really not as much as say like Morton's. I'm going to deglaze the pan now with some Shaoxing wine and that will help help even steam up a little bit of the excess cabbage and soften up everything in general. And then I'm gonna follow that up with some Sichuan style doubanjang, a very salty, somewhat spicy fermented bean paste. Even though they don't taste anything like each other, the closest thing I can think to this is like gochujang. And just because I don't think they'd taste anything like each other doesn't mean I think replacing doubanjang with gochujang would be necessarily bad. It would be a lot more sweet, but I think it would be pretty tasty. So if that's all you can find, I say go for it. So this stir fried cabbage has your basic and classic mala flavor, which is spicy and numbing. <laughs> Excuse me. And over rice is a pretty perfect complement to this lamb based hot pot. And as you can see, the broth has softened everything up really nicely and melded all the flavors together. <laughs> I love my dog. She's, she's just great. What was I saying? The, you're right. So the soup, yeah, all the flavors had melded together and is super hearty. The stir fried cabbage is super spicy. And honestly, the best thing about it is the lamb meat was probably, was definitely the most expensive thing of it all. And I think that whole package of lamb meat was what, 12 bucks. And then the cabbages were a couple of bucks each from the grocery store or the farmer's market. Pair this off with like a small bowl of rice. This could easily feed three or four people. Use this for meal prep pretty much. And I pre-packaged on top of some rice, some cabbage, and then like in a separate container with soup, I pretty much had all of this feeding me for the rest of the week. And it was super healthy and super hearty and very, very satisfying. So y'all got three different dishes in one video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did and so did Mochi. <laughs> I will see you guys next week with another video. Uh, I guess like and subscribe if you haven't already and then enjoy the rest of your weekend.